Hello, my name is Elena and welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to be showing you how to make a heating pad. This is such a great gift for pretty much, I feel like everybody could use one of these, but especially for Mother's Day coming up. I made mine out of some scrap fabric that I had, so it was really low cost and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm gonna walk you through all the steps, how to do it, and you can make one just like mine. So to start off, I'm just kind of measuring the fabric that I have. This is a scrap from one of my previous projects. If you haven't seen the video, go check it out. It's really cute but I'm measuring my fabric to see what I can do and how big I can make my heat pack. I ended up folding my fabric in half and then making this piece 12 inches by nine inches, but this can totally vary depending on how big you want your heat pack to be or what shape you want it to be. So I'm just taking my fabric, making sure all of the edges are straight, and then I'm going ahead and folding over and doing a double folded hem on both ends of my fabric. As you can see here, I'm making sure that both the hems are folded up equally on both sides. Once you feel really good about the fold, you can go ahead and use a straight stitch and sew along using your normal seam allowance and try to get it as straight as possible as these stitches are going to be somewhat visible. Here it is. I just love a nice top stitch. It looks really nice and clean. Once you have done that, you can fold over and overlap the top part of your fabric slightly over the bottom part of your fabric and pin along the sides. This will create a nice little pocket, kind of like a pillowcase that you can tuck your heating beans into and that way you have a removable and washable heating pack. Once you feel like it's all pinned nice and straight, you can sew along the edge, leaving yourself plenty of room to finish that seam off any way you'd like. I went ahead and serged these ends, but you can pink it with pinking shears or do a zigzag stitch or another way that you like to finish off your raw edges. Here is the finished little pouch. I'm just putting it right sides out and seeing that it looks all nice and good like a cute little envelope. Once I have my little envelope pouch, I'm just measuring it to see how big I should make my bean pouch. There's different ways that you can do this, but I'm just taking the measurements of my pouch and I'm going to make my bean pouch the same size finished as my outer pouch. Because we want it to be the same size finished, make sure to account for seam allowance. So I usually use a half inch seam allowance, so I am making mine an inch bigger on both sides when I'm cutting it out so that when I have stitched it and I turn it right sides out, it will be the same size as my pouch. I'm doing this on a fold as well, just like I did on the outside. You don't have to do it on a fold if you don't have one. I just thought it would reduce the number of steps. So I sewed down both sides and then you can put it right sides out when you're done. Also, depending on what kind of filling you're putting in, make sure that you have a really short stitch. 
I'm using beans and so it's not as necessary, but if you're using something like rice or wheat, then you'll definitely wanna make sure that you're doing a really tight stitch. Once you've done that, you can move on to the next step, which is creating three channels. You don't have to do this on your pouch, but this is something that I wanted to do to make sure that the beans would be evenly distributed in my bean pouch. So I took the total measurement, divided by three, and then marked it with chalk. You can also use just regular pins or anything else that you can mark. And I'm just sewing a straight line down, but it's really important to leave yourself about an inch at your open edge so that we can finish it off nicely when we go to close up the hole. Once I have sewn all of my channels, I am filling up each channel with beans. You can use a piece of paper, but the holes in my pouch were so big that I could just use my hands, so that's just what I did. I filled them up with beans as much as I thought that I would like, pinned it, tried it out, I went ahead and added a little bit more, and once I got the desired fullness, I folded in both raw edges so that I could have a really nice finished look on that outer edge of my bean sack. Once it's pinned and ironed, you can sew a straight line down just to close up that open hole. And that way all of your beans will be encased and they won't be squishing around to one side of your sack. I hate the word sack. I really am happy with the size of the bean pouch. I think that it fits in really well to the little envelope and I'm really happy that I made a removable envelope because I have a heating pad right now and the outside is super nasty but I can't throw it in the wash so this will be so perfect and I think my favorite part is that when I hold it up to one side all the beans aren't going to just fall to one side of the bean pack it'll stay nice and distributed which will be perfect. I hope you guys really loved this tutorial. If you did, please like and subscribe and I will see you at the next one.